Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh and this is Josh. Hi. And we recently got a really awesome opportunity offered to us uh, by Time Warner Cable. Yes. Specifically, Joe Richardson from Time Warner Cable. Uh, they have a program called Connect, a million, Connect Minds. a million Minds. Really cool program. And their mission statement is to inspire the next generation of problem solvers by connecting young people to the wonders of science, technology, engineering, and math. Also known as STEM. I didn't just read that. He did read that. So Time Warner Cable is sponsoring this episode and we got to go down to the Stark County Urban League. Yes, and big thank you to Vince Watts. Uh, yeah. He made that possible. Right, and so we went down there uh, to meet a few kids that come out to the Urban League and uh, to teach them about some of the wonders of Principles flight. Principles of flight. How many of you guys have ever looked at an airplane and wondered how in the world does it turn through the air? The controls. The controls, yep, there's someone yep. in there moving the control sticks back and forth or with the model airplane, we're moving the controls and the transmitter. Um, let me wiggle some stuff for you real quick. You see this back here? Mm -hmm. And this right here? These are called control surfaces, all right? And the way they work, and there's some out here on the wing, the way they work is as the airplane moves forward and has a blast from the propeller and also forward momentum, air passes over them, all right? Whenever the air is passing over this control surface and say it's bent up, it causes resistance. So basically what he's saying is, <laughs> when the air passes over it, see the elevator is up like this? So if the elevator is up, then the air is going to push it down, making the plane go a different direction. And same thing with the ailerons, that's how it's going to turn. Mm -hmm. So what it, when the wind goes over it, and you have your control surfaces put in a certain way, the resistance that he's talking about is going to force the plane to go whichever direction you want it to go. But this is kind of a boring example. Very boring example. And that's why we have this back here. Do you guys want to try this out back here? Why don't you, why don't you guys over. come over here? Come on over. We kind of broke it into three different parts. We wanted to teach the principles of flight and we yeah. chose control surfaces. Right. So what we did is we... Uh, we made a crazy spinning dentist chair. Of doom. Of doom. All right, so what we got here is our simulator, our control surface simulator. We've got it set up with a gigantic rudder right here. So yes. the rudder is going to determine the uh, left and right direction. Since it's vertical, it's going to go left or right. Oh. Yeah. So if it was horizontal, what do you think would happen? Yeah. Up and down? You got and it. Down. That's I think it. I got it. Yeah. Now, right. now the next thing to do is to spin around, huh? All right. So the kids sit in the chair mm -hmm. with their feet on the rudder bar. Yep. And they just move it back and forth. And the leaf blower on the back of this That's thing. That's our thrust. Thrown air back on the rudder. Mm -hmm. And whichever way they move the rudder bar, they spin. Yeah. And they actually got to learn a technique of how a real pilot controls a rudder yeah. uh, through the air. They use their feet. might not be able to tell by the look on their faces, but they actually were having a really good time. They were. Probably just a little camera shy. Just a little bit. This is actually the same setup as it was in a 1933 airplane. The plane. exact same to control the rudder. Kids got to spin around the chairs, learn the concepts of flight, and also how every movement has to have a matching movement to stop that movement. Yes. That was a really important thing. All right, guys, let's recap here. How do control surfaces work? Let's see who can explain it to me. It moves by the control surface and moves by the wind. Yep. By the wind. Yep. yep. The control surfaces catch the wind. As the wind pushes against the surface that's resisting it, the whole tail or the whole mechanism is going to move to try to equalize that resistance over, thus making the airplane turn in any axis that you want, depending on where it's located. How is a helicopter and an airplane different? Yeah. Good question. The helicopter, airplanes are known as fixed wing. Okay, that means the wing sticks in one spot and the motor pushes it forward. A helicopter actually has two wings on it, but it spins around like a propeller, and that, that's rotary. Okay, what it does is by the pitch of the wing, just like a control surface, it actually creates and throws lift down, and depending on how much person the uh, pitch is on it, is how much angle and how much lift it gets. Mm -hmm. To say it simply. Who was the first person to uh, make airplanes? First person? Well, Orville and Wilbur Wright in 1903 were the first ones to uh, have power flight. Right. Oh. To get it right. Yeah. 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 The Wilbur yeah. Wright brothers? Yep. Orville and Wilbur yeah. Wright. You got They're the first ones. Now, there are gliders before that and there are hot air balloons before that, but they're the first ones to put a motor on an airplane and actually be able to fly with power. All right, well, you guys ready to make your own planes? Yeah. Yes. All right, we're going to go this way and do it. And then we moved inside. And this That's is right. where the Time Warner volunteers really stepped it up. And uh, we're really thankful for them because we actually had probably like 15 kids. A lot of kids. Building kits. And obviously we weren't going to worry about electronics no. and all that stuff today. So we made so, pods. Yeah, we made chuck lighters for them. 
Uh, so they had like a little foam nose on the end yep. and everything. Yeah, and we used uh, actual barbecue skewers in the front with uh, nuts in the front. So the kids got to learn a little bit about CG too, because yeah. we showed them how to balance out the airplanes and why that's crucial as well. So they were able to build their planes and they did it very well. You know, you did so good, I'm gonna take you to the next one. Go ahead and put a bead of glue here and here. So now that they had a good knowledge of control surfaces, mm -hmm. how they work and everything, yes. we actually got to take them out into the gym with their planes that they just built. Yes. So that they could chuck them and see how they fly. One, two, three. And there are some really amazing results from the beginning. But yeah. the kids that didn't have amazing results, we were able to then take that concept of control surfaces and adjusting right. and help them to trim out their airplane. Yeah, so if, well. if, no, if their plane was going nose down into the ground, they knew to, uh, to adjust the elevator. The elevator. Mm -hmm. So that it would soar. So the next thing we did was we sat them down. Mm -hmm. Kind of recapped over the whole entire experience. Yeah, all about control surfaces. Yeah. Now, what two control surfaces do you see on your airplane? Go ahead. Uh, the tail. The tail? Yep, that's called the elevator. You want to guess why it's called an elevator? Oh, oh because no, up it moves. and down. Because oh, yeah. it makes the plane go up and down. Right you got on. it. Which way are we going to move the elevator if up the airplane is diving? Up and down. Uh, oh, side, 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 side. Side, side, side. Side, side. Side, side. Elevator. Oh. Elevator. Oh. elevator. Oh. elevator. Oh. Now, if the plane wants to do this. Yeah. Oh. MJ, you had it right the first time, buddy. We're going to move it up. So now, with a pretty good knowledge of control pretty surfaces good. and what Especially they're supposed the to do. Especially the elevator. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, the next thing we did was we actually got their hands on the controls. We had a couple vapors and uh, we buddy boxed with the kids yep. and let them take a step. They it. did amazingly well. They really got the concept down quickly. You're doing fantastic. Hey, do you remember what I told you how the little movements are the key to success? So all in all, it was a pretty cool day. It was an amazing experience, and tell you the truth, I think we learned as much as they learned. Oh yeah. Maybe even a little bit more. Yeah, we'll, we'll actually do a lot better teaching next yeah. time. And this is our, our passion, but it's also a new direction for us. And we really want to connect with communities. We want to connect with uh, young kids and, and introduce them to the fascination of flight. That's right. So there's obviously a lot to learn because it's a far stretch from going from reviewing. I'm, I'm still learning. Planes. Yeah, we're all learning. And uh, I really want to sincerely thank Time Warner Cable and also the Stark County Urban League for giving us this opportunity. And also the kids. They were just yeah. really amazing kids. You guys did awesome. Really good. good thank job. you guys. Yeah, and we also want to thank Vince Watts from the Stark County Urban League. And Joe Richardson from Time Warner Cable. Thank you guys for the opportunity and for sponsoring us. Yeah, and all the volunteers from Time Warner Cable as well. A lot of fun people over there. Yeah, we want to thank you guys for watching. Thanks to Time Warner Cable again for sponsoring this episode. And make sure you check out our website, flighttest.com. There's some additions. That's right. There's lots of new stuff being added to the store, new mm -hmm. speed build kits, everything. So check it out. Check it out. See you next time. See ya.